Children receive nasogastric tubes, known as NG tubes, to deliver liquid nutrition, medications, or fluids into their stomachs. An NG tube can stay in place for a month or longer, but sometimes it can accidentally be removed every few days. Good day. My name is Beth Lyman and I am a pediatric nutrition support nurse. On behalf of the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, ASPEN, and the Novel Project, I am honored to provide you with this video. Today I will be showing you how to place a nasogastric feeding tube using best practices. Whatever the reason for the NG tube and whatever the use, safe insertion of the tube and proper verification of placement are key aspects of the procedure. As we begin, let's look at where that tube goes once it enters the nose. On this graphic, you can see a side picture of the nose, mouth, throat, esophagus, stomach, and intestine. The tube enters the nose and with gentle downward guidance, it travels into the throat to the esophagus, which is the muscular tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. Now in the same vicinity of the esophagus is the trachea, or breathing tube, which is the tube that connects the throat to the lung. Did you know that NG tubes can be misplaced and this can cause harm to patients? It can happen at this point in the placement where the tube accidentally goes into the lung by the way of the trachea instead of the esophagus. It is at this point that serious harm can be done if not detected. How do we know where that tube ends up? An abdominal x-ray would tell us, but generally pediatric patients don't automatically get x-rays with each tube in order to avoid excess radiation exposure. So we need alternative methods to verify tube tip placement and avoid tube misplacement. Today, you will see the steps to NG tube placement and verification, and we will start here at the Children's Mercy Kansas City Simulation Lab, and then demonstrate on a real patient. Before we get to the demonstration model, there are some key points to consider when placing one of these tubes, so let's discuss that. When a baby or child is breathing very fast, such as during a respiratory viral infection, the trachea is open more often than usual, which could allow the tube to slip into the wrong place, the lung. You might be able to tell this if there's a quick change in color around the mouth. This bluish tinge is called circumoral cyanosis. You might also see a rapid change in the child that is otherwise unexplained. Pull the tube out and let everybody take a break, including yourself. It's also possible that there is no sign that the tube is not in the right place, which is why we want you to know the best way to make sure the tube is in the right place. Now here is a tip you can use that has helped me many times like this. Blow in the child's face forcefully. This causes a startle reflex that makes the child swallow. Make sure you time the blowing with the advancement of the tube, but this will work. Wait some time before replacing the tube or you run the risk of needing to just replace it again immediately. If the child seems more settled in 20 to 30 minutes, try then. If not, and more than an hour or two go by and you still do not think the child can tolerate having the tube replaced, call the health care provider for guidance. Remember, the smaller the child or baby, the less time you want that child to go without feedings. I would love to tell you that an NG tube typically is done at home, but that is not always the case. Here are some things for you to consider if you are not at home and the tube needs to be replaced. If you're in a public place, consider cleaning off the diaper changing station in the restroom and use that spot to have some privacy and control your child a bit better. If you need help, be sure to recruit someone to help who seems like they can hold without being too rough or too weak. If you're at home by yourself, many parents put the child on the floor between their legs to keep the child still. Now let's do that NG tube placement, but this time we'll be, it will be on a baby doll. The first step of the process is to gather your supplies and select the correct size tube for the size of the child. Use the NG tube of the size and length that your provider suggests. A general rule is to use the smallest bore tube to get the job done. Here are some examples of NG tubes. As you can see from these tubes, one has a stylet or guide wire, while the others do not. Your provider will have selected the best type of tube for your child. 
It is not the purpose of this video to endorse any particular brand or type of NG tube product. Now it's time to gather the rest of the supplies. The first item you will need is water-soluble lubricant or water. I prefer water as the lubricant can burn the nasal passage. A non-toxic permanent marker. If there are number marks on the tube, you can use that instead of a marker, but make sure you tape the tube in such a way that you can see the number. A skin protectant. Discuss which product your team uses. We use an apple pectin thin wafer cut to the size of the cheek. I will not be using that on the doll today, but we do use it on children. Hypoallergenic or skin-friendly tape. I cut two pieces. A 3, 5, or 10 mil infant syringe. This is a specific type of connection used on syringes, feeding tubes, and feeding bags that is a new standard for safety for tube feeding equipment. pH paper or strip or any other commercial product that allows to, for us to check the acidity of the stomach. Some sort of sheet or blanket to swaddle smaller children or babies. Now, we're ready to demonstrate how this is done. The first thing we always do is wash hands or use hand sanitizer. In the hospital, nurses will wear gloves, but at home, parents usually do not. Select which side of the nose you will insert the tube, and to protect the skin, wipe the cheek with a non-sting skin protectant if available. Allow this to dry. Apply the apple pectin wafer to the cheek and gently press in place. We will not use that for this demonstration, but I do use it on children. It is important to make sure that the tube is in the proper place in the stomach. To do that, measure how much tube will be placed inside the child by placing the tip of the tube at the nose and lay it to the bottom of the ear, then to the bottom of the breastbone, called the xiphoid, to the belly button. The tube should be laid out to the spot halfway between the belly button and the tip of the breastbone. Mark that spot with a marker or make a mental note of the number, which is the centimeter mark, and go to that number. Measure the tube each time you put it in. Some tubes have a longer tip because they have weights. When you measure, be sure to put the first hole where the formula will come out at the nose and not the tip of the tube. Position the child with the head up. And for infants, you will want to swaddle the baby and have someone hold the head and body while you insert the tube. A pacifier will help the infant swallow while the tube is going down. For a toddler, hold them in your lap, securing the head, body, and legs while someone else inserts the tube. For an older child, have them sit up and sip water through a straw to help with swallowing. A key point to remember here is to keep the head straight and not allow it to tilt back, which opens up the throat to the lungs. Lubricate the tip of the tube in water-soluble lubricant or water. Once the child is secure, Place the tip of the tube in the nose, angle it toward the center of the nose. Gently push the tube down the nostril until you reach the mark on the tube that you made when you measured how long the tube should be in to be in the correct spot in the stomach. If you feel a blockage, pull back a little bit and try again to reinsert the tube. The child may cry or gag, but if they cough, choke or have trouble breathing, pull the tube back. Retry once the child calms down a bit. This is also where you will want to blow in the face of a smaller child or baby to get that startle reflex and swallow. <sighs> <sighs> Remove the guide wire if used 
and check the pH, which I will explain in just a minute. Tape the tube as close to the nose as possible. The tube should not press on the nose, as it might cause a sore to develop called a pressure ulcer. Make sure you can see the mark that you made or the number so that you can tell the tube has not moved. The nurse will show you how to do this to help keep the tube in place. There are different products for taping the tube in place. Your healthcare team will discuss these options with you. If the tube hanging outside the nose is long, wrap the extra length in a circle and tape it to the back of the shirt or tuck it into clothing to keep it from being pulled out. Now that the tube is in, I will demonstrate the appropriate way to check the position of the tube tip. The ink mark on the tube that was placed to measure the length of the tube to be inserted should always be seen at the nose. The mark needs to be the same centimeter number as when you inserted the tube. If the mark is not the same at the nose, you should remove the tube and follow the steps of inserting the tube again. Attach an end-fit syringe, usually a 5 or 10 mil, to the end of the NG tube. Pull back gently on the plunger and check pH using the fluid obtained. pH measurement represents the acidity of the stomach fluid. The lower the number, the more acid is present and is a good indication that the tube tip is in the stomach. When you pull out the stomach fluid from the tube, put some of the fluid on a small piece of pH paper and match it to the pH paper grid or to the pH strip canister. The stomach fluid should be at a pH level of 5, 5.5, or less. Your healthcare team will tell you the cutoff number they recommend you use. If your child is on antacids or medications that decrease stomach acid, the gastric pH could be higher, so checking the pH may not tell you if the tube is in the stomach. Check with the healthcare team for guidance. If you have flushed water in the tube, it can change the pH, so withdraw two to three mils and discard prior to checking pH. There are many products that check pH. Your child's healthcare team will show you how to do it and what to use before going home. Sometimes you may not be able to aspirate back stomach fluid. This may be because the stomach is empty or the tube is high in the stomach. If this is the case, you can give a three mil flush of air down the tube and try to pull back again. Watch for coughing, choking, or turning blue when flushing with air. If these signs are seen, remove the tube. If you still cannot get any stomach fluid back when you pull back on the syringe, reposition your child by turning on the left side. and try to aspirate again. If you still don't get any stomach contents back and you didn't see any breathing problem with the air flush, remove the tube and replace it as it could have coiled in the esophagus. Once the tube tip is confirmed by pH, flush the tube with a small amount of water, two to three mils, if recommended by the healthcare team. Now that I've demonstrated on a doll, I will show you this process on a real child. Okay, let's get some hand sanitizer on. You ready for a new tube? Shall we do a new tube? Okay. Okay, let's go right here. Let's press that in place so it can get nice and well secured. Oh good, that's a great job. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now let's measure and see how long we're going to put the tube in. Okay. Just get my hand. It's okay. 
you're suspicious, aren't you? Gotta put your feet down so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. It's, it's all right. Mama, can you hold his hand for me? Here we go. To the breastbone. Where's your belly button? Okay. All right. Oh my goodness sakes. You're gonna be sick now, aren't you? Okay, Mama, can you hold his hands for me? Stay right there. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. It's After watching this video, it is my hope that your apprehension has been lessened about doing this on your child. I have placed hundreds of these tubes using the methods I've shown you today. It's important for you to pay attention to your child's reaction, stay calm, and follow the techniques you've been shown.